Welcome back everyone. Well, I'm on a beautiful hike this October day and we're heading into a beautiful area, a little piece of history, an ancient history here in Harvest City. So I'm heading through this uh, forested area here into an area uh, called the Penny Sand Dunes. These sand dunes that we're going to see were a deposit um, from the Champlain Sea that formed when the Laurentide Glacier um, retreated um, over 10,000 years ago. So what it's left are these sand dunes uh, that are a very unique habitat and only a few you know insects and plants are adapted to this area. Take a look at this beautiful forest. Uh, the leaves are coming down now. It's just amazing. I mean the camera really doesn't do it justice. It's just beautiful in here. A lot of these areas in this forest um, this just used to all be sand dune. So there are restoration projects here in the city uh, that, you know, allow for planting of trees and red pines and things like that. So the dunes uh, kind of started disappearing slowly over time. Think back in the 50s and 60s, a lot of people used to come here and treat them like beaches and suntan and hang out. Um, but it was quickly realized it's a very sensitive uh, and unique ecosystem that should be preserved. I see where I'm walking here and all these leaves. If you look underneath, it's very loamy soil. So when the Laurentide Glacier uh, retreated, I left behind uh, the Champlain Sea and the Great Lakes and uh, brackish water um, because, uh, you know, it connected with the Atlantic Ocean uh, as well as the kind of fresh water from the glacier. And, you know, that um, Champlain Sea covered um, parts of Ontario and Quebec and Vermont and New York. So basically like Ottawa and Montreal and Quebec City were kind of buried underwater. So eventually um, the ground rose above sea level, the water disappeared and left behind a huge deposit of sand. And also the southwest winds helped model kind of the dunes that we see today. So we're approaching the dunes. This is really magical. Take a look. If you look at the trail map here, we're kind of at C32 and we're going to be coming up um, right on um, B32. So up in here is where we're going to start seeing the sand dunes. And, uh, you know, the sand dunes cover huge portions of this area, even where some of these homes are right now. Um, but as you can see, the forest kind of encroached in as well as development, threatening this sensitive ecosystem. As you can see, opening up here are these beautiful penny dunes. This is so cool. There's like major restoration projects in effect, like I mentioned. They're actually looking at taking down some of these trees to expand out the dunes. Because although tree planting is great, um, it gets rid of some of these really interesting ecosystems. So take a look at them behind me. So cool. I was here in the summertime and there was a professor um, here, there's a, a big, uh, an educational event uh, and he took um, like a blade of one of his little pocket knives um, and sort of put it into the sand and it was slightly magnetized. So basically had a little bit of, um, like almost like iron filings, probably a little bit of magnetite or something in the sand. So that is really, really cool. So in here they are um, restoring the dunes and uh, this summer there was a project to kind of plant more native um, you know, flowers, wildflowers that support our local pollinators. So here we can see some aster uh, and the bees absolutely love this as well as some goldenrod. They also have a bit of planting of uh, milkweed as well in here. Um, and this helps our, um, our monarch population. So here you can see there are areas are cordoned off because very sensitive ecosystem. A lot of interesting insects live here that would live nowhere else that haven't been seen in 200 kilometers around this area. So the ghost tiger beetle and the big sand tiger beetle live here. Um, they can kind of camouflage in with the sand so we don't want to crush them. Over here you can see some very sensitive plants that are encased in uh, this kind of tent um, so they don't get buried in sand when the winds come up or um, trampled on. It's neat that they kind of label things here so we can see there's a uh, three-leaf top tree now leaves are down obviously but uh, it does support the giant swallowtail butterfly it's also milkweed and other plants that have been um, you know installed and look at that some beautiful grasses up that way behind the dunes I love seeing how the uh, wind sculpts them you can see that up there the trees in the background yeah, so since 2011, really active restoration of this area, taking trees down, um, restoring four sites actually of these dunes. Um, and I'm so glad they're keeping this open to the public. And this is basically a scientific lab. There's people here all the time um, studying these plants and insects, doing research and things like that. 
Um, so it's really, really neat to have this access right in the city. And this is in the heart of a major city in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. This is some pearly everlasting, a favorite of our native insects. A lot of these plants here um, are very drought tolerant, obviously, and tolerant of very hot. Can you imagine how hot this sand gets in the summertime? It's a very unique microclimate. Not a lot of things can do well in. You know, this is what our, you know, beaches would have looked like a long time ago. Plants and things on them, not combed and pristine like we see them now. A lot of things can survive and will survive in this environment. We had extreme drought this year, as I showed you all, um, little river that dried up this year. And so these plants and these new <laughs> restorations were subject to a tremendous amount of stress. Uh, and they did very, very well. I mean, everything's kind of quieting down for the winter here. So you'll see things a little bit more brown or leaves falling off, but they're, they're thriving here, which is really nice to see. And there's an interesting kind of smell to the air. I think it's like some of the, um, some of the flowers actually have a nice smell when they're dried. Um, also here, there's sort of, uh, I think they put in, like I said, goldenrod, they've got some, um, cone flowers and bone set, um, probably some black eyed Susans, things like that. And a few little shrubs as well. This one right here, oh, bee bomb. That's why I'm smelling it. This is spotted bee bombs. This is one of our native bee bombs. Yes. That's why I smell that. It just smells that kind of oregano type smell. Oh, it smells good. And there's a little bit, actually, if you look down here. A tiny little bit of growth. Um, we had a little bit of rain. Um, so some things are kind of mm, coming back. So that's why I smell that oregano smell. And certainly all the insects are magnetized to this, this plant. I think this is amazing. Some of the plants here uh, are put in to help endangered insects. So this one right here is the New Jersey tea and it's the host plant of the endangered mottled dusky winged skipper. So it's a beautiful little plant. Which that little skipper is happy to have this in its new environment. Some little juncos feeding in there. You know, it's winter time when they come in. It's nice to see them probably eating some of the seeds. Oh yeah, there they go. They're going and feeding on that bee bomb, the seeds. That's great. I find this absolutely amazing that we still have access to something like this, something that is like thousands and thousands of years old and has all this kind of history here. The sand here uh, is several meters deep. My understanding is between, I think, three and five meters deep. Something interesting going on in here, you can see there's some, uh, like some moss kind of creeping in here. A few other little plants. Here is one of my favorites. This is sweet fern. And uh, it's an amazing plant. And it is also the host plant of the gray hair streak butterfly. I don't know if I've ever seen. Uh, sweet fern is extremely aromatic. Use it in teas. Some people smoke it. It's also a good insect repellent, believe it or not. The smoke is if you uh, put it green on a little bit of a fire, it'll keep your bugs away. But um, it is something that the butterflies love. There's also some unique tree species they are preserving in these tents too. Another hop tea tree. You can just see the leaves here. Oops, pretty unique. It's going to be amazing to come back here in the spring and see the progress with the flowers and them blooming. But the fall is also a nice time to come because you get to see all those beautiful colors. Here I am hiding along with some goldenrod. Yeah, I think I might come back and maybe do some volunteering or something in the spring, helping them uh, with planting every year. Um, the restoration begins. It's a never-ending project. So it's something that may be really helpful for me to give back to the community. So I'll definitely think about that. Well, let me know what you guys think about this beautiful ancient dune system. Do you have something like this, um, you know, where you live? Let me know all about it. I just wanted to show you this because I think it's just super cool. It's not something you see every single day. And uh, it is really special and it's really, um, it's really great to see that, uh, you know, folks are taking this kind of restoration project seriously and, um, you know, helping our, 
local wildlife and pollinators when really our earth needs us the most because uh, there's a lot of stressors going on right now. So hope you guys have a great week and enjoyed today's video. We'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.